Hello everyone, I'm Rich Lamont. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. I started this channel to share my love of salmon flies and fly tying. I cover everything from spay flies to salmon flies to uh, artistic flies. I cover techniques. All my flies are step by step so that way you can follow along. I try to give as much detail and specifics as I can throughout the whole process. That way it's much easier to understand but you can also um, try out certain techniques and see certain things that I do. Um, if there's anything that you ever need to know um, or you have a specific question, by all means, shoot me a message. I'd be happy to make a video about it. Um, Mondays, I'll be doing material reviews, everything from all the different pheasants that we use to different hooks, uh, different threads and silks, tinsels, and uh, more things that are used in salmon flies. So, if you guys enjoy the channel and you like a specific video, by all means, please uh, hit the thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed, think about subscribing. That helps out the channel, that helps me out. And leave your notification bell on. That'll let you know when I post a new video and you'll be able to follow along um, before anybody else. So with that being said, hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's get on with it. Hello everyone, I'm Rich Lamont. Welcome back to the channel. This is your first time here, welcome. So, for today's fly, I'm working on a custom fly. Um, this one was commissioned by a gentleman in Idaho and uh, asked if I could make a video of uh, dressing the fly. So, uh, you know, I said absolutely. Uh, this fly is actually going to be kind of a combination between a Lady Amherst and a Purple Emperor. So I kind of put my own little twist on it and... Um, no, I think uh, everyone's going to like what I come up with. So uh, the hook that I'm using is a Lars Mahler hook. Here's, uh, here's his information if you're interested in any hooks. He's got all different sizes. Just send him a message, um, reach out to him on his email, and uh, you know, ask for uh, some pictures of the hooks that he has, and you can just pick them right out. He's got really beautiful hooks. This one is about a size 8O, so this is a rather large fly. Um, first, we're going to start with the silk gut. Now, this one's not going to get a huge underbody, um, so I figured I would show the hook first and then uh, get this all tied on. So when you tie in your eye on there, a lot of the books from the past say you should be able to fit a needle in there. I like to have just a little bit more but just remember that when you wrap these and you start to tighten it up it's going to push this out just a little bit as that loop closes. Okay, I'm happy with that. This. this is going to be fully gutted so it's got a nice even body on it. I'm just going to use a razor blade right here and just very carefully plane out along that gut to give it a kind of an angle instead of this. Uh, if you look right here, you can see it's got a blunt cut square end. I'm going to try to cut along the gut here. And that should give a nice smooth transition from the body right to the back section where the butt will be.
I'm just going to grab some uh, underbody material. This uh, is woolly nylon. You can get this on uh, Amazon. And like I've said in my other videos, um, the woolly nylon is like 10 bucks, And you get a lot of it. I've uh, spooled up four of these regular bobbin spools. And um, I have a I have a whole bunch left. I probably have another 10 spools that I can get off of that big main one. So they give you plenty. You can buy one of those for 10 bucks and you'll have enough underbody material for probably years. I've been using that same, I've been using this same uh, bobbin spool here since I started the channel in September of 22. So that gives you an idea of how much material really comes with it. So very worth it. This is going to be a tinsel body fly, so I'm not overly concerned with these wraps being exactly touching but it does need to be smooth smooth transitions towards the front and smooth transitions in the rear and everything nice and smooth in the middle in between if this was flat tinsel every single turn of this would be touching this is going to be oval tinsel, which is a little bit more forgiving for um, any kind of lumps in the underbody. Now if you get your underbody material and you can get it to wet, get kind of webby, pull it far, farther forward or farther back and that'll help spread it out. It'll widen the thread here. Just make sure that uh, all your all your turns that you want them to be wide like that this is as wide as it can be as you can get it all the way down to the bobbin you do that just by spinning right or left hmm, just do a couple of whip finishes And then we'll just put a small drop of some hard as nails or you can use saliva clear or really any kind of a clear head cement. that little bit and we'll just keep that knot those uh, whip finishes from coming out as you work on the fly and just use your burnisher if you don't have one uh, you can get this one off of Amazon it's really I think it was like seven dollars or something um, it's under a jewelry burnisher
that'll help flatten this out, smooth things, smooth it out, and get the fibers kind of settled into the uh, little gaps and make it nice and smooth. Now, um, the tip and tag that I'm doing for this is going to be uh, silver twist and yellow silk. This is kind of more of a golden yellow that I'm using, but this is uh, from 54 Dean Street. Um, you can get this right online. Um, really nice stuff. Typically it's a little on the thick side for some of the smaller flies, especially for tags. But uh, in this case this is a much larger fly, so... I'm going to make this tag a little bit longer than usual. I'm only going to do three turns here. Now to prevent any lumps, I'm actually going to keep this back a little bit. And I'm going to use this in the tag as a ribbing. Sorry for blocking your view. Now for the tins for the floss. I'm going to bring this up just to about right about where the shanks straightens out. And I'm going to start my floss there. Now from here, very carefully twist it whichever way you need to to get it to flatten out a little bit. You don't want it to be all twisted up. I don't want the starting point right here on the side. Starting your floss from and tinsel from underneath, I suppose it doesn't really matter that much as it'll mostly get covered, but it's good practice, especially for tinsel. It just leaves a better reveal and looks, and to me, it looks better.
Just not sure I'm happy with that. And a quick little burnish on that. And then we'll wrap the silver twist ribbing on the tag. Try and get those nice and evenly spaced. This right here becomes a little bit of an issue. Right on this last wrap of tinsel, that's right next to where the tail is going to be. So that could wind up actually making the tail to kind of stick up more. Let's see what we can do with this. instances like this it's good to take your thread and kind of build up oh, watch the tip of that hook and kind of build up uh, almost like a little platform for the tail to sit on and you can also burnish it and flatten it out. This uh, silver twist actually burnishes out rather nice. Doesn't get completely smooth but it'll actually kind of work its way into the floss a little bit and leave a nice flat spot right here. The tail for this is several sections. I went ahead and put these together ahead of time. Um, that's blue and gold macaw, scarlet macaw, wood duck, and then repeats. So I got those made up for both sides. I'm going to take these and pinch them together and hold them nice and tight. Make sure they're the length that you need at the tip. Everything's lined up the way you want. It has the shape that you want. And then you're going to 
figure out the length that you like. In this case, I'm going to go a little bit longer. Um, just because it's a beautiful tail and I think it's really going to suit the fly well. And then take your other hand and help kind of collapse it onto the top of the hook. And then you start compressing it and you see it's kind of compressed down nicely like an accordion. Go ahead and make a loose wrap over it and just let the bobbin hang and then use your hands to just kind of lower it into position. And another wrap. Four. And you can stop and take a look and I am very happy with that. Oh, I was right at the tip of the wood duck. Alright, so I've made a new set of tails. As you guys know, I'm sure that wood duck, once you uh, get a couple of fibers misaligned, it's rather difficult to get them all back into place just right. Alright, so once again, we'll compress this down a bit. Give it a loose wrap. Um, Alright, next is Black Ostrich Hurl. I do want this one to be a little bit on the just outside. A bit thicker, a bit fuzzier. Um, Trying to find just the right piece of ostrich here. This one down here will do nicely. All right, now we take this piece of ostrich hurl and just strip away this little bit down here where you cut it off the uh, off the stem. And go ahead and trim the rest of this off. All 
Right, now I'm going to use some wax. I haven't used any yet. Alright, now I take your ostrichurl, pull it towards you, forward, and then up. And that should align it so that way the main stem of it is on this side and the fuzzier side is facing the back of the fly. And we'll do just touching turns. All right, got the tail on. It's actually the same tail. And we're right back where we left off. So we'll just clip off the rest of this ostrich. The ribbing I'm using is a, uh, it's supposed to be like a gold oval tinsel for the Purple Emperor, but I've gone ahead and twisted up and made some uh, gold rope. So I'm going to use that instead. I think that's going to look really nice and really show through on this on the body of this. So like with other tinsels, go ahead and take the outer sheathing off of these just a bit and expose that core, that soft silk core. By doing that, you're allowing yourself to have a smoother tie-in point. Otherwise, you'll be tying in like this big lump of twisted tinsel and That'll wind up just like that, a big lump. So to ensure we've got a smoother transition into the body, we just take that outer sheathing off, expose that silk core, and continue on. Now the hackle is a, uh, for the Purple Emperor, they call for a kakabandu. Um, Lady Amherst, I believe, is the same. But I'm going to use a, uh, a badger instead. I'll go ahead and we'll spread all the fibers out. I'll tie that right in. Right next to that. Um, twisted gold. Okay, now the main body is going to be large silver oval tinsel. And for that I'm using Vivas. I'm 
Great stuff. I have some longer hooks, so it's going to take a good bit of tinsel. Go ahead and tie that in on the back side of that gold. Now your first wrap will cover that gold and not leave you with any kind of a weird spot right there. Sometimes you wind up with a small little gap of black right here. Alright, so now we just start wrapping the body. That stayed in well. I have enough tinsel here. My spring is the material holder is just uh terrible. Perfectly fine. Being a purple emperor, this front portion here is going to have a bunch of purple seals fur. Alright, so again we're going to want some wax on the thread for the seal's fur. The seal's fur I'm using is from uh, Feathers MC, fluorescent purple. I thought the nice bright purple would stand out really well. I'm just putting a little bit of wax on the thread.
You don't have to make it super thick with a whole lot of dubbing. Just a nice fuzzy coating. And you always want to twist in one direction. You don't want to go back and forth like this. If you're going back and forth like this, you're going to wind up with dubbing all over the place. And it's not going to bind to the thread very well. Even without wax, you can do it as long as you do it in one direction. Okay, now we'll bring up the gold tinsel, the ribbing. Okay, and right here at the tie off, I'm going to tie that off right underneath here. Alright, now we're going to go for the hackle. And take the hackle, and you can either fold it beforehand, you can fold the feather pretty much just by taking your fingers and pulling all the hackle in one direction. Or what I like to do is wrap it, and it'll fold as you wrap it. Make sure it's all spread out nicely. And you can kind of palm it back as, as you go. Okay, so now we've got there we go. So we've got our hackle in. Now for the purple emperor, normally there would be a, a throat being put in, but here's where things start to get a little interesting. Instead of going for the purple emperor style 
wing. I decided to mix it up a little bit and I'm adding some Amgold. Um, it's just a cross between Amherst and Golden Pheasant. In this case, these uh, this is what the feathers look like, the tippets. So they kind of have more of a squared shape, kind of like a golden pheasant, but it's got the color of the waiting am of the Amherst. So I'm going to take these and make a wing out of them. 